When is enough enough? Hey, Chris and Peaches. I have recently started intensely following you guys, joining the Patreon and Discord, and have already noticed changes in my mindset and what I want in life. That leads me to this email for you both. My husband and I have been married for four years now and together for seven. I don't know if age matters, but I'm 27 and he's 33. These past three and a half years have been very hard. We had our daughter three and a half years ago and just had our second baby almost six months ago. We got pregnant with our first a month and a half before our wedding. This was a very difficult pregnancy, and she actually arrived a month early as an emergency induction. <clears throat> it was a very traumatic experience, to say the least. She is a happy, healthy firecracker of a little girl. During the pregnancy, my libido was basically zero. This is important a little further into the email, and it continued for the years to follow. I was working a factory job and miserable. I ended up quitting the factory job a month before she was born because I just knew something was going to happen. At the same time I left my job, my husband decided to quit the factory as well. We both worked there together. Was that like a, hey, honey, I got something to tell you? Or was that a discussion between the two of you? It was not a discussion. So both of you just up and quit your jobs? I discussed it with him, mm -hmm. and he told me, go ahead. If you can't work, you can't work. And then he worked for like a week after that, and then just, like, I'm not going. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> the entire first year of her life, I somehow managed to stay at home, but I'm pretty sure it was only possible because of COVID with the stimulus checks. He worked jobs here and there throughout the year, but for the most part, he wasn't working either. I honestly have no idea how we got through it without losing everything. This is where things really started to take a turn. I want to preface this by saying that he is diagnosed bipolar type 2 and has major depression with lots of previous personal traumas. Ever since that factory job, he has had a minimum of 30 jobs. Holy fuck. But it was probably, but it probably is more than that. Do you mean like to date he has had 30 jobs? Since the time he quit that factory until now. All right. <laughs> so this started, what, COVID era? Yeah, COVID stimulus checks. Okay. It is to the point that it's almost a routine. Works for two weeks, finds something to not like about it, dwells on it, and ends up quitting. Oh, he's a workless. Sounds like it. Could you imagine... I, I, I don't think I've had 30 jobs in my entire life. Mm -mm. I don't. I, I, I honestly think that I'm probably under 15 jobs in my entire life. That's a lot when you think about it. Yeah. In, in, in what, three years? 10 jobs a year on average? Yeah. Oh, I had this camera solely on you. I'm over here talking to you and you were just on you. <laughs> I can predict when he is about to quit a job and nine out of 10 times I'm correct. I also get student loan reimbursements every semester, and without fail, when that large check comes into the account, within the next week, he will be jobless again. I actually have changed the account it directs deposits into so that I can pull from it to pay bills, but keep the rest in there without him seeing it. I'm not sure why he believes that he can just up and quit a job, or honestly why I've put up with it for so long. Was he like this before you guys got together? Was he a job hopper before you got together and had a child? No. He actually worked for Walmart for two or three years. And then we got together and then it just, I don't know what happened. Oh, uh, he saw that you would work. Yeah. There were other revenues of income. The workless will work until they don't have to. And when they find someone that can either tolerate their behavior or supplement. This is... This is a really shitty position to be in. I desperately want everything to work with us and live the life we have planned. I have given him so much slack because of his mental health. Nah, fuck that. Yeah, there's, that's an excuse. He now has enabling. a wife and a child. You're yeah, you're enabling this behavior. Yeah. Yep. We have not had financial stability in four years. 
I never miss work unless I absolutely have to because if I miss a day, our bills won't get paid. When we got pregnant with our son, he was at his job at the time for two months, which was a lot longer than everything else. He was also very unplanned, but definitely wanted. After the first year of my daughter's life, I returned to work and worked up until the day I went to labor with my second baby, then returned to work 13 weeks later part-time. Not only am I the only one consistently working, I am the only one doing basic chores around the house and the main caretaker of our kids. No matter which way this goes, um, as somebody who was a single mom and has had the two-parent household, um, I would rather be a single parent than have another adult dragging me down. Right. That, that's too much for me. I was a much happier mom when I was a single mom versus being in that other relationship. Somebody in the chat said that uh, they say that you have seven careers in life. Um, they were, I think it's seven, could be five. Either way, constantly changing a sign you are the problem. Uh, and then somebody else asked careers or fields of work because there's a difference. Mm -hmm. And I actually agree that there's a difference. Um, I, I can't imagine that there's seven or eight careers. I, I could be wrong, though. Do you, do you think that, like, because a job's not a career. Like, if you go from McDonald's to the UPS store to Pizza Walgreens. Hut to DoorDash, yeah. those aren't careers. Those are jobs. Um, I view being a carpenter as a career. Trade, a right. A surgeon. Right. A mechanic. Something that you do for a long time. Right. You make a career out of it. So I could see, you know, being a psychologist for two years and then leaving that and becoming a waitress. I don't view that as a career. That was a job to you. Um, I think longevity also dictates whether or not I view it as a career. If you were a mechanic for six months, that wasn't your career. No, no, it's not. It was a so okay. if someone was a surgeon for 10 years and then they decided to become an actor and they've been an actor for the last 15 years, I view that they've had two different career fields. Right. Okay. Yeah. I am up all hours of the night with the baby, helping my three-year-old figure out her emotions and trying to keep myself afloat while working and doing chores, schoolwork, and cooking. When he is home with the kids, nothing gets done, and it is always because of something with the kids. It is always an excuse. Honestly, though, even when he is home by himself for an entire day, while I have the kids with me, nothing gets done then either. This is the shit that I am zero tolerance on. Zero fucking tolerance on this. You're not going to help me around the house. You're not going to help with the children. You're not even going to have a consistent job. This would be a sit down conversation of this shit needs to be fixed right now. Or we need to figure out living arrangements. Ooh, you're annoyed. I am very annoyed. I, I don't tolerate the, the lazy dad, the lazy husband. It's all excuses. I agree. Oh, well, I have bipolar and... So does everybody else who is currently killing themselves to survive in life. Yep, she's an excuse. I have expressed to him many times how it makes me feel, how I feel like I'm doing 100% while he is doing zero. Things will get better for about two days and then go right back to the way it was. If he does something around the house without me asking 100 times, he expects me to praise him. But as soon as the house gets a mess and I don't have time or motivation to clean it by myself, it is my fault because the house is not kept up on. Do you tell him thank you if he does something around the house? If it's not something that I have asked many times for him to do, I would. So if you've asked him four or five times and he does it, there's not a thank you or anything. It's just he does it in silence. Depends on how irritated I am with him, honestly. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to say, but this. most of the time I do thank him. I'm going to say this and, and understand that I I am acknowledging the fact that this is not okay on mm -hmm. his part, but that gratitude, even though the other things are not okay, makes you the bigger person. It makes you the better person. It shows that you're still invested in that you're still trying. And this falls into what we were talking about in the previous live. Mm -hmm. You can't 
lower the standards of who you are as a person because the people aren't holding the expectations that you have for them. Or because you're frustrated. Right. Yeah. Work on being the best version of you and hope that he's capable of doing the same thing. And if he's not, then you know that there's decisions that need to be made. But don't compromise your integrity mm-hmm. out of frustration. Yeah. There are times where you and I are in the middle of a disruption, <clears throat> conversing about things. And if you get up and do something and you bring me a drink or whatever, thank you, babe. I appreciate that. Right. There is always that bottom line of no matter how pissed off I am at you or frustrated or feeling misunderstood, I love you. And I am not going to let my moments of frustration be taken out on you, even if you are the cause of it. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. But – I'm going to I'm going to add to that too though in that your anger and frustration even if I am the cause are a you problem. Right? Because you're allowing that anger or frustration to take place in the first place instead of getting to the root of things before you get to that point. Mm-hmm. So the actions that that you're getting frustrated by are a me problem, but the way that you choose to handle the emotions that are going through you right is the you problem. So like you handling things the way that you handle them makes me not want to be the problem anymore. You know what I mean? So, like, it's important to remember, too, and not everybody's going to give you that same level of respect. Right. But. And that that's when that comes in. If they're not willing to meet that same level of respect, then you get to decide on whether or not they're going to be a part of your life. Right. I understand that he has his flaws and a slight reasoning for these behaviors. No, there is no slight reasoning. That right there is that enabling behavior. There is absolutely no excuse for what he's doing right now. There is no rationale. He started to go to counseling and actually quit a job because he wasn't because he wouldn't be able to go to his appointments, but he quit going to them anyways. I have depression myself and postpartum on top of the already existing depression and anxiety, but I am still doing the shit I need to to provide for my family because it needs to be done. They deserve to have whatever they want within reason, and I want to be able to provide that. My daughter recently decided she wanted her ears pierced. Tried it yesterday, no go, uh, but she has a cool marker dots on her ears and a new cool purple stress ball. And she is starting dance. I want to be able to give her these things without worry or asking my parents to help out. My parents are amazing and help me so much, but they have also told me it's really hard to see me going through these things and not being able to fix it for me. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. As a mom, if I saw my daughter going through this shit, I'd be absolutely devastated. I I, I may have missed something. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm fucking exhausted because okay. I didn't sleep much last night. Did is did she touch on whether or not he's a good dad, like in terms of actually being present? No. He's not. Um. Or it wasn't touched on. Him being present and like active with the kid hasn't been touched on. Okay. But he is very much a like what's the point of cleaning the house if the kids are gonna fuck it up again? Okay. She didn't say that. That's the the energy. And I, I could have just asked her because she's on Zoom. I, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I'm I'm fucking beat. Um, is how is he as a dad? Like he's is he a present father? Like he does he actually do shit with the kids or is he there but not present? There, but not really present. That's a fucking problem. That is a massive problem. Okay. I would I would allow our daughter to move back into our house. If this is shit that was going on, I would babysit the grandchildren. I would do whatever the fuck needed to be done. I, I While she worked her ass off to make sure she got to the point where she needed to be. I would rather her not move out of our house. Right. Until she finds a man that she's ready to marry and move in with. Mm-hmm. I know that we can't control that. Right. But if I had my way... <laughs> I assess how that would play out. Yeah. I hardly ask for help from him anymore because it's just easier to handle everything myself to prevent three-year-old meltdowns, unnecessary battles between him and our daughter. What? Unnecessary battles between him and our daughter? Is this man fighting with a three-year-old? Sometimes. Absolutely fucking unacceptable. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they butt heads really bad, and he doesn't handle it well at all. So your daughter's first impression of a man is a super aggressive one that has no respect for her. 
Yeah. I I want to be clear. We're not attacking you. Like no. I, that, that was a very sheepish yell. Like we're not. That's not what we're doing. We're just trying to get the information that we need so that we know how to approach the email. Like, don't don't think that we're berating you in any of this. We're just trying to get details. No, I I respect the okay straightforwardness. <laughs> um, I want to clarify. I'm very disgusted by your husband's behavior. Me too. This is um. This is not something to be overlooked. This is not a. This is just who he is as a person. This is the rest of your life, and this is going to be your children's mental battles into adulthood. I have no respect for a man who can't be a man for his family. You, you say that shit while looking at me. You're fucking preaching to the choir, sister. I, <laughs> oh, that shit makes me angry. Like, don't, don't I call could, me sister. I, I could be. I was. I was like a. Like a Jesus moment. Yeah. So um, I, I just, I, man, I get, I get, ugh, I get it. I get it. The libido situation is a whole nother agree- argument that we have. I am aware that I'm not the same as I was pre-babies, and I have read books about sexual desire to try and help me understand what is going on with me. The book really helped, and I was so excited to show him a section that makes me feel 100% seen and understood to the point I was in tears. What book? Come as you are. Is it spelled C-O-M-E or the other way? <laughs> C-O-M-E. Okay. <laughs> he shrugged his shoulders and told me, yeah, I'll read it. But I had to open it up for him and beg him to please read it. How long were you guys together before you got married? Three. Was he always so just nonchalant about giving a fuck about you? Wait, three what? Years or months? Days? Three what? Three years. Okay. He used to like, seem like he really cared. Oh, sorry. okay. I have sent him some of the podcasts that hit on how I feel and they go unwatched. Along with TikToks I send to him that perfectly explain all of my thoughts and feelings when our daughter was six months old. We had some trauma that happened privately on vacation. Oh my God. I hate Diet Coke. I am a Coke Zero guy, and this is all we have, and this is bullshit. Um. (laughs) You good? (laughs) No, my brain's just going shark bait. Ooh ha! Three days ago, he got really mad at me mid-conversation when I was at work for not expressing any desire for the past week. He told me that I am the problem and I have always been the problem since our daughter and this crushed me. (laughs) I am not sorry that that scared you guys. That's fucking hysterical to me. (sighs) Sorry, I'm closing these windows. I can't. I can't do this. Okay, so I'm going to be honest. I can't finish this email because I am just absolutely enraged by how you're being treated. Um, There is a very serious conversation that needs to be had, and you need to be willing to uphold whatever you tell this man. If you tell him that shit needs to change or I'm moving out with the children and shit doesn't change, you need to call your parents and ask them if you can stay with them. This is a... He's taking advantage I massively. Agree. I agree. So we we have stated in the past that giving ultimatums can be very dangerous. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, are you able to support yourself financially without him in the picture? 
Not currently, but my parents have been very open on me leaving him and moving back home. Okay. And they're willing to help you and, and the kids and, and be present with the kids while you're getting on your feet? Yes. Is this something that you've considered doing? Yes. Okay. They live two streets away too, so it's kind of nice. All right. All right. So I just want to read this real quick in the email. I just don't know how to heal our marriage or at this point if it is, it, if it is even possible to heal. I know he is not 100% at fault in this. I should have set firm boundaries years ago. And I suck at communication. I firmly believe that the people that come and go in our lives are for a fucking reason. Whether they be a healing person, a learning lesson, a you go through this, now remember who the fuck you are. I'm going to be very honest. If this were me, this is my relationship. This is the person that he proves himself to be. I will be calling my parents. When can I move in? Like, what do I need to do to make the fucking kid ready? Like, right. And there would be no sweet talking. Baby, I miss you. Come back. I'll change. No. Yeah. You no, had thank you. Of time to show me that you can change. Um, I would, I would move out. I would focus on healing myself. I would focus on being the best mother I could be. I would focus on healing the children. I know your son's very, very young still. Your daughter's three, and three-year-olds are sponges. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. going to take a few years for her to forget the things that he's done. Um, but for the next few years, she might have some nervous tics or anxiety going on. So that's something that you're also going to have to focus on. I had something, and it's gone. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It was um the it was the only thing that I could have seen being a saving grace in all of this is if that he was a good dad. Yeah. Which means he would have to be present with the children. Because there's a lot of things that can get overlooked if there's a, a positive parent involved. Right. <clears throat> like a man who is a workless that spends a lot of time with the kids is still not doing all the duties that he needs to do, but there's a saving grace in that he's actually raising the children. You know right. what I mean? So like there can be a balance there, but I also have a hard time with men who won't work, but that, that, I mean, that's, that's a me problem. And I know that this, um, this is a very sticky situation. And she said that she knows that she didn't set her boundaries down in the beginning. Um, we shouldn't have to, as a society, explain the boundaries of like, we're both going to work. Right. You're going to provide. You're going to be a father if we have a kid. Like you're going to be the shit, man of the fucking house. Like that shit should be common sense, um, agenda or whatever. But it's not anymore, unfortunately. And those are things that do need to be discussed. As much as mm -hmm. it sounds silly to have to say those things. Yeah. And if this goes along the route of you do move out and move in with your parents, like you said, they're close. If he is serious about, I'm sorry, I miss you. His actions need to fucking prove it. I would move in with the parents. I would get on my own feet. I would probably get my own fucking place, get my own apartment or something. And then we can date. I, I wouldn't even do that. I, I wouldn't do that. And he, If his actions change? No, because um, everything that I've read, I don't have mm -hmm. life experience with a workless, right? I've never experienced it. But everything that I've read about the workless is that they are only the workless when enabled to be the workless. Yeah. And he's already proven that that's the case. Mm -hmm. And as she is able to step into that role and give him the ability to do that, that um, behavioral pattern is now established. And I don't believe that the change would be long lasting. I think that he would make enough of a change because he has no choice but to go back to work and be like, look, I've got a good job. I'm, I'm doing the thing, blah, blah, blah. And then if they get back together, she moves in with the income. Eventually, he's going to fall back into that same routine yeah. because that is the pattern of the workless. Like, mm -hmm. it's documented. They say that it is more uncommon for a man to be a workless than he is to be a narcissist in today's day and age. And in that the, the Choice Theory book, they put that right up there with sociopaths. Yeah. So, did you just knock on something? Um, I, it might have been my foot or okay. something. Okay, I wasn't sure if somebody's out there knocking on the door. I didn't purposely knock on something. Gotcha. I 
I hope our advice is helpful or our insights and perspective and thoughts. I'm sorry that this is your life. It's exactly what I needed to hear. I hope there was a validation in things and that you now have the confidence in your own tuition to do what's right for you and your children. That's rough. This is a rough one. Yeah. It's always hard when there's kids involved. It is. It's really fucking hard with children. Lorraine, can you rephrase your question? Because I don't understand what you're asking me. I want to add that he is going to make this very hard for you if you decide to move out. He is going to guilt the fuck out of you. You are, you're taking me away from the children. You're going to ruin the children. You're a bad mom for this. Yep. Mm -mm. No, sir. Put your shit in time out. I'll block you for 48 hours. Unblock you. Ready to have a civilized conversation? You continue being a child. And then we'll bump it up to 72 hours. Don't play games. <clears throat> hey guys, if you enjoyed that, found it entertaining, funny, or even learned something you didn't know before, share it. And if you're not subscribed, why aren't you? And for those of you who want to support us, get access to exclusive content and live streams, we do have a Patreon. All the links are in the description.